Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another one in our series, Breaking Down Barriers, which is inspired off the back of my book, Breaking Down Barriers, My Journey from a Small African Village to the World Stage. My name is Chris Igwe, and I want to welcome you. Now, one of the topics, I, I talk about many different things because I, I believe it's important, not just through what I'm saying, but also for it to relate to you in terms of where you are in your journey. And this particular one I think is interesting because it's very much today. It is very much the world that we live in. And I entitle it, Consider the Role of Mixed Marriage. Consider the Role of Mixed Marriage. Well, why would I talk about that as a topic? Well, firstly, because I was born and raised in Nigeria, I'm Nigerian, and my wife who I met in Edinburgh is from Scotland. So you have two cultures, very much two cultures coming together. And in a world where when we got married some 41 years ago now, we just celebrated our wedding anniversary last week. So if we met back, you know, 40 plus years ago, the world was not what it is today. And by that, I mean, mixed marriage wasn't that big a thing. Whereas no doubt many of you are, have multicultural relationships, let's put it that way, or, or involvements. And I'm going to come down to the specifics of what I talk about, which is identity. So going back to my story, 40 plus years ago, we met Nigeria, meet Scotland. We went to, or I went to her mum's which is on the west, oh, sorry, her mum and dad's on the west coast of Scotland in a place called Troon, which for those of you who enjoy golf, you'll know um, Troon and their house overlooked the golf course, in fact. Now, this is where this world's collide came in. So on the one hand, as we were walking down the beach, hand in hand, enjoying a nice little walk, the looks that we were getting from people who had never seen, which is why I I identify the, the small town, as it were, on the west coast of Scotland. They'd never seen a black person. A number of people who turned their heads, one almost walked into a lamppost as he was looking back, couldn't believe it. And then we walked on to my future sister-in-law's restaurant. She had, ran a restaurant, a very successful one in Troon, and my girlfriend's fiancé, we walked in, and you know, one of those cowboy movies that you might have seen where you walk into, you know, the, 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 um, into the saloon and those doors swing open. So we literally walked in and the silence, instant silence. Imagine people are eating lunch and we didn't go for lunch. We went to say hello to my future sister-in-law and just catch up because she was so busy. She couldn't come to the house and see us. And so I just thought we'd go over and say hi. Walked in and everybody with all the clattering of cutlery and plates and whatever, silence. Silence. Everybody stopped and looked up at this black guy that had just walked into this restaurant. Now for me, as I keep saying to people, I was born black, I'm black, therefore this is all stuff that I live with day in, day out. It's not something that I think about consciously, but my future wife was very, very uncomfortable. It really made her ill to see the reaction. Anyway, long story short, there are various other stories around that, but um, mixed marriage can have an impact. It has an impact if you allow it to, but it can always be very positive impact. So in a sense, what I wanted to focus on, and I did in here, is about identity. I start off by saying, knowing your identity is important. Today, it is easy to get lost in wanting to blend in. We might wish we want to be someone else. We might want to live someone else's life. However, we were born to be ourselves. Born to be ourselves in all our splendor in all our magic, in all our, what we bring to the world. So learn to walk tall 
and not be intimidated by getting lost in the crowd. Now, as I say, I don't read the book. I'm not here to do a bedtime story for you, but I just want to highlight and capture some of the pieces. All my personal stories are in there. If you want to get a copy of the book, great. If you don't, that's all right. We can continue this conversation. So let's delve a little bit more then into identity. What is identity? Well, identity is a multitude of things and can be broken down into even more. As we talk in my world of retail, we talk about personalization. So it breaks down even more from being black, being from Africa, being Nigerian to what is Chris like? What does Chris love? What does he, what kind of car does he drive? What kind of house does he live in? What kind of environment? How often does he go shopping? Well, never. Um, not my favorite pastime. I always get it wrong. So the other two weeks ago, my wife gave me a list. I said, you really want me to go? She said, yeah, please do. I went and I came back and inevitably I got it wrong. I bought stuff that was way too expensive. I didn't buy the right brand, which is why I say to her, go shop yourself. That's, she said, well, you were on, it was on your way. So, you know, we take our risks. But identity is about individuality. It's about ethnicity. It's about gender. It's about sex. It's about sexual orientation. It's about your origins, it's about your background, it's about your education. It's about your family status. These are all parts of identity. And wherever you are, in that. Do not, do not disown it. Do not give it up. Do not allow it to consume you. So as I said there, don't compare yourself to others. You are who you are and you are blessed to be who you are. And nobody can take that away from you unless you allow them to. Unless you allow them to. And that is very different so remain with who you are because your identity is what makes you precious. Your identity is what brings joy to other people, to be honest. Imagine if we were all the same. We all came from the same country. We all came from the same family. We came, all came from the same upbringing. How boring would that be? Now, if you're in that environment already, that's a choice. That's okay. But what about if you got out of it and you decided to go after a different aspect? You see, today, social media and Instagram in particular, but maybe others, has created this false sense of you all want to be like him or her. When I go onto Instagram and I look at some of these stars, whether it's football or soccer, as you call it in the, in the States, or some tennis player, you know, somebody who's on a pedestal, and you look and you see the number of likes, the number of likes compared to the number of comments is disproportionate. Why do you want to be one of the five million who likes an image of Cristiano Ronaldo or Leo Messi? Great, great footballers, don't get me wrong. But what is that doing? What is, what is, what is your anchor point in that? Look at it and then move on and go, yeah, that's not my life. That's not who I... And that's not who I will be, perhaps. I'm going to be this in my own world. I'm going to be a big fish in my small pond. And I'm going to be totally happy with it. The moment you start comparing yourself to other people, that's a recipe for disaster because it gets to you mentally, emotionally, physically. And we know some of the consequences of what happens. But identity is also about the experiences that you've had. You see, they are some of the richest experiences. I have had phenomenal experiences, even through the most difficult things, again, some of which I refer to in the book, which are around racism, around prejudices, around preconceived ideas and notions. What have I learned through that? I've learned so much. I've learned so much, which has given me power and strength and confidence because I've grown through it. Another quick example, it's a funny story. I know I've told this to a few closer friends and they've kind of been horrified by it. 
because of where we are today. We're in a world which is very different from the world that I grew up in, for example. My granny, or my wife's granny, died a long time ago. When my wife, before we got married, announced to her that I, she was going to be marrying a black person. And granny, and this is my wife, or my wife-to-be at the time recounting the story, asked if I dressed like Tarzan. Did I dress like Tarzan and run around with a loincloth? I say that not to denigrate her in any way, but when I tell that story to certain people, and maybe even you listening to this, you're horrified because you're taking the context of then and you're putting it into today. But she had, my wife's grandmother, an idea, because she had traveled, but she'd only traveled to the, she played a lot of golf, traveled to the most wonderful five-star resorts and hotels and everything else and didn't go to Africa anyway. But she had this image of what she'd seen in the cinema on the, on the television at the time. But my wife had the very smart idea, like I say, we weren't married then, but the fiance, we're having a, a tea party at Granny's. We went and she very smartly put me next to Granny. And I sat next to Granny. She loved me, I think it's fair to say, and I loved her for the short period of time that I knew her, because she saw me in a different light. She actually said, she didn't say this to me, we had a, lots of conversations um, during that time, just chatting away to each other, getting to know each other. And she said to my wife that evening, or when we were about to leave, he's actually a really nice boy, really nice young man. I can see why you want to marry him. So as rough as the story may be about her perception of me, she was able to see my identity, and I was not gonna give up my identity just to be what she wanted me to be. I'd heard that she thought I ran around like Tarzan and with a loincloth. Could I have been upset? Absolutely. Could I have sat next to her and given her the third degree, as we say, the riot act, and you know, been disrespectful to her? I could have, but that's not the way I was brought up. I wanted her to see and understand who I am, what makes me tick, what my background is. Not the same as hers, but mine is mine and I own it and I'm not giving it up. And in the end, we were able to share this common space, this common moment for a brief period of time. Unfortunately, she died before the wedding, so she wasn't able to, to join us for that. But she saw me for who I am, and I was not in any way transforming myself or my life to suit hers. So identity is also about experiences, but it's about having your values. What are your values? Because whatever they are, especially the good ones, that's why, you know, it's positive values, if you like, hold on to them. Do not give them up at any cost. And I talk in the book about core values, what those are, what those are to me. So here, just a quick snippet, is one of my top values is integrity. Everything I do, say, am, I want to measure myself against integrity, a being integral. Quick example, inevitably when I've led teams, there are times when tough decisions have to be made by the company about retaining staff or letting them go. And in one or two instances where I felt unequivocally that the decision that the company wanted to make and that I had to deal with was wrong. And I put my career on the line, I put my job on the line with them. I said, if that person goes, I'm going to. That is a benchmark, a barometer of integrity for me. Inevitably it didn't happen because they didn't want to lose me because I felt that person, whether he or she was more expensive than the others, this is not the time for him or her to go. So anyway, I put my case forward. So my point is integrity. What are your values? What is it that you have grown up with? Because you want to hang on to those as a core part of your identity, which you are not going to give up. This is what Margaret Mead says as a quote. Always remember that you are absolutely unique, just like everyone else. 
you are absolutely unique, just like everyone else. Everyone is unique, and so are you. So on that note, I want to wish you all the best. I look forward to uh, connecting with you again. Subscribe to the channel so we, you know when other videos are made available. And I wish you all the very best. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you.